and we're back i watching the hockey game got an eye popping jaw dropping headline that i can't really understand so explain to me how this 22 year old just got paid 14 years at 340 million dollars yeah so a league redefining deal for fernando tatis jr and this kid is i would say feels a little bit like mcdavidish if if i were to give a comparison of of uh, a player coming into the league feels a little bit Zionish in terms of it's this new age of player where he is completely against a lot of the unwritten rules of baseball. He's a bat flipper. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. He plays fantastic on both sides of the ball. And this kid is the future of baseball. Um, he's a face that they need in order to liven their league up and get more attention from the younger consumer demographic. Um, because like hockey and baseball, a lot of these guys are pretty dry, which is fine. They go about their business, they're professionals, but in order to attract fans, you need guys with personalities. And that's what the NBA has done so well. That's what the NFL is starting to do so well. And, and MLB, NHL, they need to follow in, in the footsteps of those, those two top leagues. Right. So with baseball, this kid is the future and traditionally in baseball, especially, uh, you enter the league, you get drafted, or you get signed out of wherever, uh, like Vladdy got signed out of uh, Venezuela. But you get signed, and you are not eligible for free agency for eight seasons because guys spend so long in the minors. Like, you have a guy spend five seasons playing all his way up through AAA and then finally makes it to the show. And so guys – go seven years, then they're eligible for arbitration. Then they make a little bit more. And then they finally hit free agency by the time they're like 29, 30. And that's what we saw with George Springer, right? He finally got his big deal. This move is league redefining because most teams in the MLB play around with guys contracts. So they don't have to pay them until way down the road. But San Diego is going, you are the face of our franchise. You are the star. We are going to pay you now. And he's going to, and we'll have you locked up forever. And it's, incredibly league defining because it's a guy who hasn't even played a full 162 game season yet who's getting paid this kind of money and is expected to produce for 14 years I don't know how they settled on that number but it's a long long time uh he's a really he's a stud and he's gonna be great but it is a little bit early to put that much money into him but what it does is it may force other teams it actually might hurt the Blue Jays who are trying to keep their young guys under these smaller contracts for quite a while. And as their competitive window is about to open and now teams are saying, well, look in the NBA and the NHL uh, you play three to four seasons on your rookie deal. And then you're eligible for free agency to get that max money right away, which is what happens for a lot of these guys. Cause the development timelines a little bit quicker. And now in baseball, if you want to get young kids playing baseball and you want to get kids interested in playing baseball, you got to pay these younger guys earlier because it shows that there is a revenue window for them to earn that big money with the likes of NBA, with the likes of football. And, and they're losing out on participation in baseball because kids are looking and there's no fun kind of stud stars to look up to. And there's no young guys making a ton of money. Instead, they're stuck playing their way up through the minors making, I don't know, like obviously it's a ton of money compared to the average earner, but compared to some of the bigger numbers in other sports, it's not enough. And so San Diego making the investment early, uh, rewarding a guy for his potential. And I will see if it pays off. They've got another big contract in the team in, in Machado and San Diego, their new owner is just pumping money into the team. It's going to be an excellent season to watch them and the Dodgers go at it for however many games they play it's going to be a fantastic battle of two juggernauts they're probably the top two uh favorites and they're in the same division so it's just it's a crazy move that's going to change the way guys get paid in the mlb you would hope uh i i'm always on the side of guys getting paid what they're worth because they bring in so much money for these huge leagues and owners who are billionaires who don't care about their little play thing that they have on the side as a franchise and these kids who work up for their dream and, and they want to get paid. And so happy for Tatis. It changes a lot of the way we see baseball and hopefully it gets more kids in the baseball. I would say this big contract 
Tatis, his annual cap hit, I think 24.3, that would put him 47th in the NBA in highest salary. Uh, I forget where that sits. Him. I think it's around Drew Holiday range, which is just bizarre to think about because he's one of the league's best stars and he's still kind of in the average money level of, of an average star in, in basketball. So it just shows the, the differences there. Uh, but yeah, big takeaways there, uh, and and gonna be interesting to see how this changes the way people pay their young players moving forward. Yeah, I I don't. Uh, I was thinking about it with the NHL when you referenced that how we can't we've kind of seen the bridge contract uh, fade away and not be as much of a thing, which. I don't know. I mean, McDavid, Matthews, Line. Certainly, I guess Line hasn't gotten his yet. But uh, certainly, when you come out and start playing as like a first, second line contributor, there's a solid argument to be made. You should be paid like one. But uh, that kind of two-year, four or five million dollar cap at, cap it contract coming out of your first rookie contract seems to be a thing in the past. Uh, which was just kind of a decision on how do we pay guys who are still developing their game and we don't know how good they're going to be and but we don't want to take a risk on locking them up at their full value i mean you look um crosby and ovechkin got paid right out the gate that kind of money so maybe it's more the same there but so would you say tatis jr is at a level where he's already playing near that kind of cap it or it's a gamble on him reaching it in the future well based on his last this last 2020 season i would say he's earned that level of pay but the problem is is there's not a big enough sample size to know if he's going to reproduce this they're betting that he's actually going to get better but at such a young age you never know if this is it maybe he's a flash in the pan i don't think that's what's going to happen i think that he is going to be an incredible player for many years to come but it, that's why baseball is so different. It's why you don't see guys invest in these young players because uh, a lot of times they'll have one great season and then fizzle out. And of course they've got these incredible metrics to measure like swings and planes and how guys are going to develop into their bodies. Baseball is one of the most analytics heavy sports and uh, other sports are catching up of course, but it's what they've been doing now for so long. And I think he ends up earning the money for maybe eight to nine of these years. And then you're stuck in that territory where like at 35, is he going to be a mobile uh, infielder? Do you have to move him to the outfielder position? I just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. And I think the biggest thing that this does is it gets fans super excited. Like this San Diego team is ready to compete now and it's going to be competing for many, many years to come. And so they're going to make a ton of money off of the fan interest that this generates um, and yeah, it's just, I, it's different. I think it's going to be good for baseball though, because you want to have the, the top guys with emotion at the front of your league. Uh, people love NBA stars because they have a personality. They go on podcasts, they go on TV, they, they state their opinions. They do things that catch people's eyes and catch people's ears. And baseball doesn't do that. And this fan, Fernando Tatis kid, I uh, just watched a Gatorade commercial the other day, and he just got so much emotion. And thinking back to when the Blue Jays were great, and you had like a Bautista and a Stroman and guys who were fired up on every play, just got the fans into it. And and this is Tatis takes it to another level. Um, and so yeah, just I think he earns the money short term. I don't know about ten years from now. Fourteen years is an incredibly long time. Uh, but yeah, he's going to definitely be worth the money in, in the next couple of years as he moves into his prime, for sure. All right. Well. <laughs> yeah, there's not much more to say about baseball. Uh, the Blue Jays are going to be starting their 2021 season in Dunedin, Florida, uh, which will be interesting to have professional MLB games being played in, in a summer, in a spring training facility. The field is obviously like professional in size um but it will be a weird vibe i don't know if they'll allow fans because it's kind of it's about an hour away from tampa so i don't know if there's some competitive uh revenue 
stealing stuff there. I don't even know if you'd want Tampa Bay fans there to watch games. It's kind of like the Raptors where they're getting booed in their own building. Uh, but well, yeah, should be a really fun season and spring my, training starts a week from Sunday. Uh, so then we'll, we'll get some, we'll get some storylines going before the season starts. The Jays just missed out on Taiwan Walker. I got that notification this morning, which is a bummer and, and pitching will be probably the story of the season, but we'll talk about that a little bit more next week.